In our last episode, we arrived in Linton Bay, Panama, and after getting checked in, made our way to Chichime Cays and the San Blas Islands. The San Blas Islands stretch over the eastern continental shelf and are home to the indigenous Guna Indians. This territory is rich with culture, white sand beaches, and marine life, and we were so excited to start exploring. We spent two nights here at Chichimi K, and now we're gonna move over to the Hollandaise Ks. It's about eight miles away. There is still no wind here, so we will likely be motoring, but it should take us just about an hour and a half, and then we'll have a new set of islands to explore. It's really cool here. There's so many little islands and they're so quick to hop around between them all. So I'm excited to go check out another place. We motored out a little ways and we actually have like eight or nine knots of wind. So we shut down the motor and we're sailing. We're doing like four knots, this is perfect. Super calm, this is so nice. It's so different than sailing in the Eastern Caribbean where it's always blowing like 20 plus knots. It's nice to have just enough wind to sail. It's nice and comfortable. Brooke's down below making some food. She said it's lovely down there. Yeah, not bad. We've just got about an hour and a half, short little sail to the next island. It's quite enjoyable. Wish I had a drone to capture this. A little less than two hours later, it was time to reel in our head sail and drop our anchor. So we just paid the Kuna tax. A nice man came over in his dugout canoe this morning and asked us to pay the $10. And he wrote us this little handwritten receipt. So as we understand it, that's one month's fee for us to be anchored here in this territory. Pretty cool, cheap, nice, friendly, no problem. He said that he lives right over on the island behind us there. We're gonna go snorkeling today. We're in this anchorage called Swimming Pool and it's really clear. So we're gonna go dingy around and see what we can find under the water today. In the San Blas Islands, almost every anchorage is protected by reef, which makes for easy snorkeling and free diving not far from the boat. There is so much to see underwater here. Every time we go for a swim, it's a sure bet we will find something worth grabbing the GoPro for. While I was swimming around, looking at all the fun critters hanging out on the reef, Gary was diving deep, looking under every ledge, waiting for the perfect shot. Gary's trip to the grocery store was a success. He speared his first ever cobia and managed to grab a lobster too. As the sun sank below the horizon, we were feeling pretty good about life. morning it's a pretty special day on one life what day is it october 27th is this the day you were born no i was born 35 years ago <laughs> are we going to do a birthday activity yeah we're gonna go snorkel let's go check out the reef but celebrating birthdays out here is a little different than back home yeah we don't really have any friends or buddy boats with us so it's just gonna be the two of us out here exploring
we had a nice little snorkel on the reef and we actually saw two sharks. I'm not sure if we got them on film or not because they were pretty far away, but still a pretty cool little area. And now Gary wants to go for a birthday sail. So we're ho hoping that we have enough wind to get us to the next anchorage. It's about six miles away. Let's go to Coco Banderos. Check out another set of islands. There are over 300 small islands in San Blas, which makes this area a sailor's dream for island hopping. Birthday sail! Nice and easy. Seven <laughs> knots of wind, we're not going fast. Gary decided he wants sushi for his birthday dinner tonight. And it's so calm right now while we're sailing, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the sushi rice. And I'm also gonna finish topping his birthday cake. <laughs> I forgot to download a recipe to my phone before we left, and we don't have any service out here. So I had to wing it, but he wanted a chocolatey brownie fudgy cake. It looks a little messy, but I'm gonna clean it up and I think it's gonna be delicious. Passage snack. The extra frosting. <laughs> You're not gonna have any room for the actual cake. In no time at all, we spotted our next anchorage, right beside a few palm tree filled islands, along with a few other sailboats. So we are anchored here in Cocos Banderos. And as we were anchoring, we heard some people over at the beach calling us over to have some drinks. So we ran over there and it ended up being Sailing Zingaro and Sailing Into Freedom, two huge YouTube channels. So very cool to meet them and their crew. And now we are gonna have some drinks and eat sushi. Your feast is back. <laughs> Yay, Welcome, <party>. birthday boy! <laughs> the rest of our night was pretty quiet. We had a few more drinks after dinner, and then it was time for cake. That's a good looking cake, Berkey. <laughs> no candles, sorry. It's okay, can I dig in? You can. Is it the brownie fudgy cake that you hoped and dreamed for? <laughs> it's probably the best birthday cake in all of San Blas right now. <laughs> A new island meant new reef to explore, so we found where the waves are breaking over coral and hopped in. Yep, that's a nurse shark who is hanging out right below when we decided to jump in. We were only in the water for probably 15 minutes when Gary took a shot and nailed this dog snapper. While Gary filleted the fish, I swam around the beach. The sandblast islands are purely magical. took the stomach out of that snapper and I squeezed it out. And look what it ate. It ate a lobster. It's like a whole small lobster. Do you want the lobster tail? We could put it on the grill too. This fish is gonna taste really good because it's been on a diet of lobster. That's like <laughs> ideal. Just got back to the boat from filleting the massive snapper that Gary got. And I decided I'm gonna try to make fish soup or fish chowder out of it because it is such a big fish that I don't want the head or any of the meat around the bones to go to waste. So gonna give this a try. The pot's a little too small for it. Okay, I boiled the fish head and the bone and I was really hoping to have this ready for dinner tonight, but it's not going to be. All the meat fell off, so that's what's left of the head. And I'm gonna clean the meat up and then throw all the bones overboard and then I'll try to make the chowder tomorrow. We had plans to have a fire on the beach with friends, so this process would have to wait. So 
In this bowl is the fillets that we took off that snapper. And then in this bowl is all the meat that we got out of the head and the carcass after we boiled it. So you can see it's definitely worthwhile to not just fillet a fish and throw out the rest. There's a lot of good meat in the rest of it. Pretty cool, it's really tasty too. Beach fires are not allowed on every island here, but the Guna and Coco Banderas allow it and even join us around the fire occasionally. The sunsets and sunrises are always beautiful, but the sunrise this morning was absolutely one of the best we've seen. We have been in Cocos Banderos Anchorage for a few days. We celebrated Halloween here and did a lot of snorkeling and a few bonfires. But today we are going to move over to Green Islands and it's closer to the mainland. So curious to see uh, if we get visited by many kuna and hopefully we can buy some kuna bread to go with the fish chowder I'm going to make today. But Gary is getting the boat ready up above and I'm securing things down below. I don't think we're going to be able to sail because there is literally like three knots of wind, but you never know. Okay, our anchor's up. So now it is about five miles to our next stop. There's a ton of coral reef around this area, so we really have to navigate carefully and our charts aren't actually all that accurate. So we have the Bauhaus guide, uh, which was written, I believe, by a fellow cruiser who charted all the depths in this area. And we also navigate a, light, a lot by eyesight. <laughs> okay, time to pay attention. We had a ton of fun at this spot, but there is so much more to see here. So onward we go. With little wind, we motored for an hour before we arrived at Green Island. This place is ridiculous. As we were coming into the anchorage, we had a Guna sailing in his dugout canoe with a handmade sail in front of us. How cool is this? And as we dropped the hook, we had a couple more visitors. We just purchased this really nice monkey roll-up bag from a woman who came by. Oops, I have to go over there talking to our friends on BZB right now. But it's really nice. So they make these molas, and this one's already been sewn into a nice little handbag. $20, which I think is a pretty fair price. Now that we're anchored in our new spot, I'm gonna start back on this fish chowder. So I just uh, threw some onion and garlic in the pan, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens from here. It smells good though. It's really good. How about your dinner conditions, your setting? Pretty relaxing here. What's your view like? Mountains behind you. Well, if you look that way, you get mountains and like clouds. If you look this way, you get islands and palm trees. We get busy bee. There's our friends over there. But the view behind is pretty spectacular. Today we are going to go on a little river adventure, hopefully, to check out Rio Diablo, the Devil River. It is in the Gunayala territory though, so we're not sure if they'll let us through on our dinghy, but we're going to go check it out. And then maybe check out a village. Again, not sure if we'll be allowed on land, because all of the Gunayala are currently um, maybe on their first or second vaccination. So, we'll see. We jumped in the dinghy for our five mile trip towards the mainland. It was a calm day, so the ride was quick and easy. So we just went through the little island town of Nargana and this is their airport right here on their runway. And we're at the mouth of the Rio Diablo. So we're gonna go up the river a little ways and see where it takes us. We followed a fisherman paddling his dugout canoe up the shallow river mouth. The Rio Diablo 
is used by the residents of Naranga for fishing, bathing, and as a source of fresh water that is piped across to the island. The scenery as we made our way up to the start of the river was absolutely breathtaking. Whoa. This is awesome. This is so cool. Look at how many mangroves there are. Which way? This way looks bigger, what do you think? Yeah. We think we just saw a baby caiman. We're not sure, but we think it's either a baby caiman or a lizard we've never seen before. But since we're on a wild river adventure in the jungle, we're going with baby caiman. I'm supposed to crack it. Well, you're in the jungle. Cracking a beer in the jungle. <laughs> Gary, Gary, caiman. Where? Right there. Ooh. good. Just hold this course. We continued our way up the shallow river, dodging submerged trees and branches and keeping our eyes peeled for any other crocs. Big log, Gary, go this way. Shit, shit, shit. As we made our way further upstream, we passed a number of cemeteries tucked in along the river banks. I am guessing the Guna have been burying their loved ones here long before the Spanish came along and named this the Devil's River. We followed a loaded water taxi back out to the river mouth and made our way over to the town to see if we could go ashore. As we made our way towards the public concrete dock, we passed these pigs in a self-cleaning cage over the water. We were able to tie up our dinghy at the dock next to a fishing panga. over the bridge now that connects the island of Naranga to Z Did I pronounce it right? <laughs> so it's pretty cool. These two little islands are completely developed and people can walk back and forth over this bridge between the two of them. And we saw some people playing basketball and kids running around playing and just a few little shops and stores and a hospital, a school. And even here they have <laughs> and Brooke always loves to get a cold Coca-Cola, so she's happy. My treat. But it's really pretty here. It's really cool. The island villages of Naranga and Jesus de Corazon have given up the traditional Guna way of life and are filled with bars, shops, a bank, and even a play station and a jail. We wandered around, checking out the variety of buildings, docks, and outhouses over the water's edge. But... The sun was starting to set and it was time to head back while we could still see the shallow reefs to avoid in the dinghy. We're home! <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Come along next time as we explore more of the extraordinary islands and culture of the San Blas. off before you get hit the boom. <laughs>